Hey, Sir Alisol, how are you doing, mate? Thank you so much for the 42 months. What an auspicious number. I'm making my first print with my new FDM printer. I am excited to get into the hobby. Oh, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I think we're going to go with Helmsman. I know it's a bit of a boring choice, but... It's such a solid skill. Tonk. I think this may be a pirate system. I mean, this would imply it is, but uh, I think there may be a pirate base somewhere here. Uh, this is now my... Yep, it is. Okay. We actually do have a pirate system here. All right. I figured that might be the case. I got a funny feeling they know where I am. Derelict ship. Fa another phantom class? Wow, really? And again, it's not damaged. There is absolutely no reason why I wouldn't take this. Double biscuits, indeed. And perform a survey while I'm here. I could, at this point, interact. See if you want to purchase anything. Uh, I mean, no particular reason why I wouldn't, honestly. Oh, actually, there is a reason. I was selling it to the wrong part of this station. Yeah, I mean. <sighs> This would be nice if I could get the, the walloping great money out of it, but at the same time, I'd be carting it around for that long. And that doesn't seem as useful to me. Now, what kind of ships do you have for sale, out of curiosity? I may be in the market for a freight. <laughs> maybe. It's a big maybe, though. Uh, they've got some shades and an afflictor. But again, I'm not really as interested in the pirate variants. They're a bit shoddy. Yep, phase frigates road train, but I'm not going to take the, the pirate variants for now. Through the start, no. Would it be a good idea to get expanded crew bunks for those troop transports? I am certainly an option. Certainly an option. We've got a debris field that we'll go and check in a moment. I mean, yeah, that's okay. Mining, it's not, it's not great, like by any stretch, but it's mining. It's about the only thing you can say about it. <sighs> Compromised armor is repaired on nightly profit. Fantastic! We are down to only five D mods in the fleet. Uh, also, I I do need to get you reconfigured, Tonk. I guess there's really nothing for it to to have broken. I, guess, I suppose. 
Uh, Unstable injector and reinforced bulkheads. I should have added those earlier, but oh well. Oh yeah. <laughs> Nightly Prophet, thank you very much for redeeming the gifts up, by the way. Just to confirm, I have seen them. There was an object fairly close to the sun. I, my limited experience. Those are usually nice goodies. I did notice that. I did notice it. Now, I'm going to leave the ISS... Uh, oh, you know what? No. We'll go ahead and we will, in fact, open up the uh, naming game once again. If anyone would like the second of our phase troop transports. And uh, we've got Salokin. There we go. Go in there nice and quick. So, let's get all of this done. Salokin. There you go. Enjoy. I actually have to uh, fill that up, I guess. Perfect. Done and done. But yeah, so we'll go and uh, poke our heads near the sun and see what's going on there. That was reasonably worth it. Ugh, mobile has such high latency. I'm sorry. I'll try and give more warning the next time. So you can keep your eyes peeled. Give you plenty of run-up. Right, let's avoid the corona if we can avoid it. I would like to swing around and possibly find out what is over here. And then we will look to swing back. What have we got? Derelict ship. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, it's just a hammerhead class destroyer. Uh, I'll consider it. Two hammerheads? I mean, that isn't a bad move. Can it be the Salakin 2? Sure, we can make it the Salakin 2. I think we'll take it. That was burning through a stupendous amount of my supplies. Now, I could go back and grab the, the stuff and bring it down here and uh, take it to the uh, pirates, but really, you have to go... Uh, why do you keep trying to fly into the sun? I shall rename this fleet Icarus. Yeah, two hammerheads seems like it would be a pretty solid setup for us. And while I can, let's go ahead and have a look at this. Reinforced bulkheads, armored weapon mounts. I'm not even sure that we really need the armored weapon mounts, frankly. But we can always try. Uh, got heavy mortars here. Oh, and some sabos. Uh, do I have anything that would be decent against anti-shield? I don't think I do. You know, I'm getting to the point where I'm thinking, let's just drop down some reapers on it. It's not going to do the greatest damage, but it'll be funny. Uh, I would like some point defense. Wow, Red Fox. My lord. That is a chonky gift sub bomb there. Thank you so much. Uh, I guess we'd go with the heavy needlers. Since they will allow me to punch through shield a little bit better. Then we can then follow that up with Reaper torpedoes. 
That would probably be rather... Rather painful for whoever we're fighting. Uh, armored weapon right mounts as well, I guess. Maybe. I could have stabilized shield instead. I think I'd prefer stabilized shield, actually. In fact, I think I would prefer stabilized shield over here as well. And with that, let's just top everything else off as we can. I think that should be pretty good. Mauler and Heavy Needler, or Assault Chain Gun and Heavy Machine Gun, are great combos for hammerheads. Okay. I mean, I've got an Assault Gun there. Oh, do you mean to have it... Uh oh, right, yeah, yeah, of course. So one for taking down the shield, one for doing damage to the armor. Now on phone. Because hungry. I completely understand. Single shot by high damage, yeah. Oh, the assault chain gun, which is uh, decent damage per second, 500. But I think we'll just roll with this for now. Well, that, that being said, as much as I like symmetry, something to be said about uh, having that set up correctly. Auto sign for now. Heavy Mauler. There we go. That'll do. And with that, we can allow that to start to recover. I haven't done mu uh, much with asymmetric placements of uh, weapon mounts. I really probably should, but... I don't know, just kind of scratches at the back of my brain a little bit. All right, let's go check out the Delta Vancar uh, system. We've got two fragments and one planet, a single solitary planet. Barren bombarded world. Much sadness. Have played a game where you just auto fitted every ship you've picked? Uh, no. Avak, I like symmetry. Star Wars. Look at B Wing. Avak, why? I will pretend I know what you're talking about by nodding at appropriate moments. This is a very uninteresting system. Twin assault chain guns with autoloader ability. That probably would be crazy good, yeah. I tend to not at an inappropriate moment. Orange Sims, that sounds like a problem, but uh, probably one of those endearing ones, I imagine. What do we got down here? A Lasher class frigate. I am definitely not spending a story point to get this. That will do. Okay. Well, we've uh, explored three systems. One of them had some interesting stuff in it, definitely. The other's a bit less so. Yeah, whatever you do, don't don't drop in on the black hole. That would suck enormously. Oh, 
Oh, a hello. Double hello. Wow, okay. Ultra hello. All right. We have found something. The fleet approaches the research station, an abandoned research station built either to study some interesting local phenomena or study that which is best kept far, far away from inhabited worlds. A cursory scan indicates that it has been cold and dead for tens of cycles, at the very least. Possibly hundreds. Close inspection may yield salvage, but a hostile fleet nearby is tracking your movements, making exploration impossible. Okay, fair enough. Let me go and... Oh! Nice. Loot these areas first. Six heavy machinery lost. Five gained. Not too terribly bad. Right, you need to stop being there. Uh, moving to engage, but this time I'm going to allow... Oh, actually, I, apparently I, I can't. I can't uh, pass this on. I'm just going to send in four walls. Full assault. Should be able to just watch this go down. Man, I understand why wolves are such an annoying ship to fight. Stop being so timid. Okay, we've managed to disable the uh, one thruster. That's probably the end of it now. Oof, that was a big hit. Through the wreckage. Not terrible. Not great, but not terrible. Right. There was a collection. Probably another debris field over here. So let's swing out and investigate that. And not get too close to the black hole. That would probably be bad. Okay, we've got a mining station, we've got a gas giant to investigate. There is probably additional stuff hidden around this ring. It's... oh, wait a second. It's whether we want to really explore it and fly around it waiting for a sensor to show up when there might not be one. Either way though, I kind of feel that we need to take you out. And once again, deploy and full assault. This does seem similar to an in real life wolf pack. Oh, I couldn't pass comment on that. I've 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 seen wolves um, at a sanctuary, but I didn't really see them hunting or anything like that. But that that is the only only time I've actually seen wolves, uh, not even in the wild. So I couldn't tell you whether this was true to life or not. Let's zoom in and watch this out.
pop. Pick through the wreckage again. A tiny amount of supplies. Not quite enough for what we did, but... All right, mining station. Your fleet approaches a mining station, an abandoned mining station, once a source of wealth and industry. Right, let's have a look. Salvage crews report several ships floating near the station. Closer inspection reveals they could be restored to basic operation. Transport, so not something we need right now. Oh... Extended shield, makeshift shield generator, a gamma core, ooh, a cryo-arithmetic engine. Installed in a patrol HQ, a military base, or a high command, on hot or extreme heat planets. A quantum computer that violates the second law of thermodynamics by getting colder instead of hotter while performing computations. A massive planet-wide network of tendrils ending in heat sinks extrudes itself using heat to fuel growth and continued computation the hotter the planet's surface the more effective the computation engine the unrivaled processing capacity is a boon to logistical and strategic planning increases the size of fleets launched by their colony by 25 percent for hot worlds and 100 percent for worlds with extreme heat A hundred percent bigger fleets. That seems very good. Uh, we've also got the low-tech blueprint package. We'll have the Dominator-class cruiser, the Mora-class carrier, the Enforcer-class destroyer, the Taurus-class freighter, and the Lasher-class frigate. With the Devastated Cannon, Hellbore, Hephaestus, Heavy Autocannon, Flat Cannon, Assault Cannon, Light Assault, Vulcan, Light Dual Autocannon, Light Dual Machine Gun, also the Piranha and the Broadsword Wing. Yoink. 100% absolute confirmed yoink. And a little bit of extra salvage just because. Uh, it looks like we can actually uh, explore this one. The station's memory banks are partially accessible and contain information on, on uh, indicating that an orbital habitat is orbiting a gas giant in the Both star system. Okay. What do we get in here? What? A plasma cannon. I approve. Hey, okay. Wow. All of the aliens right now. Hello, Italics. How are you doing? Hello, Sumdat. Hello, Raiders. We're doing a bit of exploration while looking for a planet to call home. We already found several planets that we could call home, but chat wasn't happy with them. So, in a strange kind of reverse Italics situation, I'm just like, you're like, surely this is good enough. Can't we settle down here? And chat's like, no. We must find the perfect planet. And so here we are, digging around in black hole systems, looking for the perfect planet. It's a fun time. But at least we are finding some interesting things. Hey, Italics, how are you doing, buddy? What were you playing? I enjoy the surveying, so hopefully you can find the golden ticket. Ah, uh, I mean, the surveying is actually quite nice, especially when you find ruins. Finding ruins is pretty amazing. But there are those of you who, uh, who may not know. It's Alex is a fellow content creator, as evidenced by the fact that he's able to raid me with a, a bunch of peeps. He isn't just some random person who just happened to be wandering by with a, a large retinue of adoring fans and just decided, ha, I'm just going to show up here. He uh, plays a lot of, of games, very similar uh, to those you find on this channel. Uh, has a very, very similar uh, taste in games and uh, is as well a variety streamer so you should absolutely giving a follower he was playing disco elysium oh did you finish it you still haven't 
<laughs> I asked, and you had already answered. You still have not. Ha what? It's impressive, honestly. It's actually kind of getting to the impressive levels. Does he do hot tub streams? Uh, only for the highest tier subs, yes. There we are. I've spilled the beans. It's official now. Italics does hot tub streams. But we just found... Oh, wait. Hang on. Ooh. We have discovered how to make Doom Class Phase Cruisers. That tier 3 benefit. Well, I mean, you know. It is a job. And as with most jobs, the more a customer pays, the better service they get. We've also got Cobra Wing Blueprint. We've got a Phase Lance. Wow, we can make Phase Lances. That's amazing. But this is particularly interesting. I Can I even have a look at what this is, though? Uh, is there a way for me to bring that up? Can I F1 on it? No. Uh, we've also got the Ludic Church Blueprint Packet. I'm not sure I want to build anything with the Ludic Church, though. I'm not entirely certain that the Ludic Church knows how to build anything that I would want to have in my fleet. Hardened shields now. This is actually something that, that we want to have a discussion about. It reduces the amount of damage taken by shields by 25% and also reduces the chance that a shield will be pierced by EMP arcs from weapons like ion beams. That is very nice. Uh, ECCM package uh, reduces the weapon range reduction due to superior enemy electronic warfare by 50%. Uh, so this is effectively electronic counter countermeasures package. So would help our missiles not be confused. The little church knows how to make things that go boom. Uh, though not always on the end you want. I I thought that was the Ludic path. All right. Well, that was that was amazing. Also got a storm needler. Finds multitudes of needles in a tight arc, creating a withering hail of projectiles that rip apart anything in their path. And is really good at killing shields. Another graviton beam. I accept. Uh, see. I've got this I've got this feeling that if we don't fly around this bloody ring, then I'm going to forever wonder if there were marvelous secrets. So fine, we're gonna go and fly around the ring. Annoying though it may be. Hang on a second. Oh wait, there's a moon. Sorry, the moon was so tiny I, I failed to notice it there. Oh, that's a good point. Actually, I, I didn't salvage the uh, station. I just let it collapse. That's a good point. What? There was a ship there for a second, and then there wasn't a ship there anymore. I think it just event horizoned itself out of this system. What? Okay, thank you very much for pointing me back here, because I completely was ready to just wander off. Uh, resistant flux conduits decreases the amount of damage taken from EMP weapons, such as ion cannons, by 50%. Also increases the ship's flux dissipation. So this and hardened shields together would be kind of bonkers. Integrated point defense AI gives all small non-missile weapons the ability to automatically target enemy uh, incoming enemy missiles and to identify and ignore decoy flares. Targeting missiles takes priority over targeting enemy ships or fighters. In addition, 
all point defense weapons get the best possible target leading, regardless of combat readiness, and all damage to missiles is increased by 50%. That is pretty amazing. And a fullerene spool. Installed in a spaceport or a megaport. Not a gas giant. Not extreme weather and not extreme tectonic te uh, activity. An ultra strong carbon nano mesh cable that is key to the construction of a space elevator. Greatly improves the. Oh, wow. I, sorry, I, fin I didn't finish reading because I suddenly uh, read ahead and I saw that the increase to colony accessibility was 30%. That is huge. Because with a megaport, that's already 80%. So this will take you up to 110%. And that's before you talk about shenanigans like installing an, uh, an alpha core into the megaport. Because I think that's an additional 20. And, the me and accessibility is effectively how to, how to how to explain this the game doesn't track the the literal volume of resources you're exporting or importing it kind of abstracts that information there isn't for every freighter leaving with a certain amount of volume of goods you get paid that much instead it kind of um through passing information through a formula decides how much of the market share of the total consumption or, and value of that consumption of that resource you represent with your exports. And that is largely impacted by your accessibility. The more accessible your port is, the bigger the market share you command. So even though you might not actually produce that much fuel, let's say, compared to some of the other factions, if you've got a ridiculously high accessibility, then in the vague kind of gamey sense, it's like, well, more traders are coming to you just because it's that much easier to load and unload and get the stuff and go on their way and make money. And that's what they care about, not whether you're making more, it's whether they can access it easier. And so all the money goes to you. Sounds like colony time. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? But that is amazing. But uh, yeah, greatly improves the efficiency of logistics between the surface of a planet and low orbit. Thank you very much, Lee. I will accept. All right. Now let's uh, carry on to the moon. Accessibility is about how easy it is to get stuff from the surface of space and what it represents. Well, yeah, effectively. Uh, let's see about you. Sparse or moderate or scattered ruins. Okay, we've got a ruin to investigate. Marvellous. A cargo manifest found by the salvage crews sent to the surface indicates the presence of a quantity of heavy machinery likely to be found if proper salvage operations are conducted. Uh, well, let's just begin. Really? I can't take all of that food? Fine. Okay, confirm. And once again, we're going to just put the cargo pods into a stable orbit. It'll take a bit of the supplies, but we've got a lot. All right. I'm going to go and I'm going to ping between these two. But realistic well actually let's let's not fly straight across the the black hole. I think that would probably be dumb. Well thank you for dropping by Italics and uh, I hope you had a wonderful stream if you are still in chat. How how is the squilly seem going for you at this point? You must be close to the end of the game by now. In fact, uh, anyone in, in amongst Etal's raiders can tell me that one. Because Italics was uh, thought he was going to be wrapping up 
Disco Elysium like two streams ago, didn't we? 